Well, Bev and I are going to explore um, ILA today, which is why we're by a bus stop. But more importantly, we're in clothes that just look like they're nice rather than <laughs> a t shirt that has just been given to me from whenever. And salt proof clothing. <laughs> and salt proof clothing and uh, jackets that just look like they're <laughs> filthy. Well, we um, came to Beaumont by bus and um, here the uh, distillery is by uh, appointment only. <laughs> so uh, we're just going to explore Beaumont and see what we can see. Beaumont the town, not Beaumont the distillery. No, Beaumont the town, not Beaumont the distillery because um, they're not doing the tours because of Covid and uh, there's only two distilleries and we're nowhere near by buses that are doing tours so it's just have to live with what you can do <laughs> Um, <laughs> we've got used to it not being sunny, it's time to run from Port Ellen because it's nice and sunny there. <laughs> no, um, the weather's mild, there's a, uh, a couple of runs of bad weather due, we've just been through one, didn't turn out as bad as we thought it was going to from the forecast, but you never know. Um, there's another one due in, in four or five days, something like that. and. Predict wind just shows a big black thing coming across the Atlantic at four, seven, or eight. It looks dreadful. So it's lying there, it's red, dark red, not black. Anyway, there's a big dark storm coming in from the southwest, so we've decided the safest place to be is on the northeast of a large island, and there just happens to be one over there. Um, so we're legging it. We're legging it back over to the north coast of Ireland, and. Let me know sailing season is over there. Our sailing season in Scotland is over, yes, that, that's the end of that. Um, but we'll still get some sailing in around Belfast Lock, it'll just be local sailing, day sailing, things like that. We might pop out to a little anchorage for a night, who knows, just depends on the weather and opportunities. Well, it'll certainly depend on, I would like to do an anchoring after we've actually sorted out the anchor with us. Well, we do have to test it. Exactly, so... So know. we'll see what happens, but yeah, the main staying away and doing the sailing season thing has now come to an end and it's now into the autumn and winter sailing uh, which is usually day sailing and sheltering from storms and blowy days in Bangor. Well, we're made to sailing. Um, so we've got the uh, main up um, and uh, that increased our speed by half a knot, um, actually a bit more than half a knot because it was 3.9 before we did it and then after we put the sail off it was 4.6. Because we're punching tide at the minute aren't we? Uh, yeah. To some extent. To some extent which is why um, we're going at those sorts of speeds. Um, but, um, but yeah. Uh, the good thing about putting the main up is that we can sail a lot, lot closer with the, just the main up and it's given us half a knot of increased speed, so win-win as far as we're concerned. Wind-win? Win-win. Um, it gets us in a whole half an hour earlier. <laughs> because we are motor sailing, Bev and I are distracting ourselves with uh, losing the horizon. The swell... Um, from the Atlantic is coming in and it's uh, coming in at we rest estimate about two meters uh, purely because uh, every now and then we lose the horizon um, but it just seems to be in um, rhythms 
So we'll lose the horizon for three waves and then there'll be like eight or nine and we'll, we'll keep the horizon and then the three will come again. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Fourier transforms here. <laughs> the, um, the problem is, of course, the swells don't necessarily come through very well on the camera, do they? No, unfortunately not. But um, every now and then we lose the horizon and um, we're just watching for when we lose the horizon, which mm. is two metres in height for uh, this boat. Well, our freeboard's about a metre and you're sitting about a metre above the top of the freeboard. Yeah, so, so that's basically We're estimating about two metres. Uh, yeah, and if we lose the horizon, and then... And the stand-up would be nearer three. Uh, yes, when we did Port Rush to Islay a couple of years ago, we were on a three metre horizon because we um, um, swell because we were standing up and we lost the horizon <laughs> but, but, it's the, not, but it's not a lot warm out here is it no but well we're just doing what we can and like i say that's our that's our fun and games at the moment fair enough but personally because i'm on the back i'm entertaining the idea of getting into the thermal gear well if you need thermal gear i do think um, that the <sighs> pilot station is a lot colder than on deck crew which is my job today. Yes, I saw it. Well, he was right where I thought he'd come up. He was going the other way. Yeah, well, maybe circle right. So far the passage plan looks like it's going well. We are arriving to the west of Rathlin uh, just in the last few hours of the tidal shifts. Um, we're getting a little push to take us in which has got us up to 6.2 knots which we're quite pleased with. I can see smoother looking water ahead and we're hoping to arrive west of Rathlin just as the slack kicks in. And then we'll make our way to Bally Castle and if we're late getting there, the hour after the slack kicks in, it's an east setting tide which will take us to Valley Castle. So at the minute, the plan is looking good. The giant swells are moderating down, I'm glad to say. The white caps are further out. The wind has dropped from 25 to 18 knots because I think we're in behind the island getting a little bit of shadow. Um, and the sun's come out which always makes me feel a lot better. But uh, so far so good. So we've got... Um, Maybe half an hour to go to we get to our waypoint and that will get us there round about on time, maybe 15-20 minutes early. I noticed that the um, depth gauge says it's minus 40 million to the bottom, which just means that it can't hear the reply echoes, so it's more than 150 metres deep. But I don't think I'm going to scratch the keel on anything at that depth, so I'm not going to worry. Yeah, well, it's uh, my day on um, doing the uh, pilot, p the passage, and um, with our failure at Fairhead, <laughs> we'll put a video link to that one. I'm just a bit nervous, uh, just in case. Um, to be fair, last time we were trying to get round Fairhead to here. Yes, and I should have an easier time because I'm leaving Bally Castle to uh, go south. So I should have an easier time. Because yeah, all you've got to do is sit here until the tide changes and then you're going to get sucked out whether you like it or not. I understand that, Beverly, but when you have a failure, it's difficult to overcome a fear, you know, because you always remember the failure. It's always there at the back of your mind. And that's all I'm trying to say is the fact that you've, in this, in this life, you've got to be able to overcome your fears because it's fear that is the thing that stops you from doing stuff. 
What are we doing queue inside again? <laughs> I'm not doing queue inside again. But that was a success. It was a success. We it's, got through that. And... Scared the pants off both of us, though. <laughs> yeah. And um, it does mean that I am definitely never going to do say Korovekin. <laughs> <laughs> about the rich tapestry of nature it's just wonderful and we were just talking about it and then what turns up one of the most intense rainbows I have ever seen it is just beautiful and what can I say it is fantastic and I love it Clipping down the North Channel, a, a rather tasty eight and a bit knots. Um, we're motor sailing as you can hear, we've got the main up because the wind is very nearly on the nose and it's very fluky, it comes and goes. Um, but we just want to get down the North Channel and into Belfast Lock, so we're just letting the motor run. It's only on about 2000 revs, no Jenny out, bit of mainsail, and we're doing eight and a half knots, absolutely crazy. Uh, Gainer's already commented that the Irish coast is looking very Irish this morning with uh, lots of green and lots of mist and lots of things that the guidebooks tell you you should see when you're here. Um, so that's that. Uh, it's just a cold morning, overcast, and it's just really a bit of a passage make in here because we really don't like the North Channel today. It seems to be fairly benign far as the North Channel goes and um, it's only got to stay that way for another hour and that'll do us nicely. Then we'll be into Belfast Lock and um, hopefully the big blow that is scheduled for the end of the week will come through at the end of the week and we'll be snugged in somewhere nice and safe. When we get in we're going to Carrick, get some shopping in, see my family um, and then we'll see what we're going to do from there. Our contract at Bangor isn't due to start for another week and a bit, 10 days. Um, so we've got to sort all that out and talk to them and just dot the I's across the T's I would imagine. But yeah, it's a cold autumn morning, just the thermal gear and uh, just mosey along. Blue skies ahead Bev. Hi. I do like to see the odd telltales flying. either the last seal of the season or the first seal of the season depending what season we're in. It's either the tail end of summer or it's the start of autumn. Not too sure exactly where I am today. Um, wind's all over the place. It's picked up the 25 knots. We've got a couple of reefs in as a result. And we've got a large car ferry. You can definitely tell you're back when the car ferries are running you down. So um, I think we're going to have to tack. We are going to be able to clear clog and jetty so that's good news. Got a happy gainer here. Got the engine off, the sails are up, and we're just at peace.
splash and dash. We certainly are. Um, one of the things that uh, Beverly and I talk about is um, sea state is everything. Uh, we think that um, winds, yes, you don't want to be in high winds, but it's the sea state which is far more important. <laughs> As I do some more splashing and dashing, but um, basically, I have currently got <laughs> 36 knots, bang on the nose as always, but 36 knots of wind, bang on my nose, and yet I'm still out, and that's because um, with the Belfast Lock, it's quite sheltered, so the wind is coming from the land, and um, although it's got some time to build up the waves. And we have wind over tide. And we've got wind over tide. Oh, and I've just seen a pop. Oh, it's not, it's a seal. He's gorgeous. Sorry. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, <laughs> I'm definitely doing some more slapping and dashing. Um, but anyway, um, the sea state is not too bad. So I'm willing to hack it because, okay, it's a bit lumpy, but it's nothing that we can't handle um, and it's fine but you can have lighter winds and have a much worse sea state and it's like uh, yuck 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 yeah just seen your seal oh you just seen the seal wasn't he gorgeous he is yes he's a nice one i mean the big one yeah anyway <laughs> yeah so let me go back to splashing and dashing because i've got to take the well, why, um, why are we doing this and how long is it going to take us um well, we went to, to Carrick after our last sale of the season um, to um, see Beverly's mum, but she was apparently too busy to see us, but never mind. So uh, we're going to have a corn basin. So we're going to have our last hoorah, hoorah there because our last hoorah in Port Ellen went a bit pear-shaped. So it's our last hurrah. Well, yes, but I feel as if this is not a damp squib because we're going out for a meal. Uh, we met some um, a really nice guy down at the marina. So we've already got a bottle of wine down already. So we're going to have a bit of a glass of wine. You know, you just can't get in the mood for oh, letting the hair down and you know just being in the moment shall we order up then yeah and lots of gluten-free options for me <laughs> okay.